Woo! Hey everyone, this is Daryl from Daily Crypto Trade Series coming to you live, live from Vietnam, guys. I'm back in the Nang and it's a Debbie Downer bear. It's been like a Debbie Downer week, guys. It's just been crazy. It's been awful out there. So we got lots to talk about. Uh, I'm glad to be back home, back home from Saigon. And remember, everything you see here is not financial advice. Boom, chakalaka. It's good to be back in the driver's seat. Back in the driver's seat, driving, driving the crypto. So this is great news to be alive. So you know, I got no good news for you out there. Oh my FG, guys. It is a bad, bad crypto crypto time right now. And, you know, I did say that we're going to see uh, Dogecoin go up to 15 cents. Well, guess what? It didn't go up to 15 cents. And we're going to talk about why it's still down and why we didn't hit 15 cents. We're, we're seeing at the right now the pre-markets are also down as well. We're also going to talk about this. Shiba Inu just launched this uh, voluntary burn thing. And we're going to talk about that. It's basically a mechanism where you can send your Shiba Inu to a burn wallet. And then uh, in exchange for that, you get some uh, APY on the burn uh, tokens. And then you get some, some Ryushi, Ryushi tokens. So, uh, you know, keep in mind, if you do do that, uh, you're not going to get a one-to-one -one return on your Shiba Inu. So, I mean, from my perspective, we're going to talk about it. But I think it's kind of a marketing thing because... Who wants to give away free money? I don't want to give away free money. And if anybody out there wants to give away free money, you know, it just doesn't make sense that you want to do that. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Also, I got some Elon Musk in the house uh, uh, tweets to the Dogecoin developers out there. And it looks like uh, we could be getting closer and closer for uh, Tesla to be accepting Dogecoin. Uh, we we're all expecting that on 420. Of course, it didn't happen, you know, so I don't know when this whole uh, mysterious, this whole illustrious goal for Shiba Inu and a Dogecoin, when is, uh, when is Tesla going to be accepting Dogecoin? I mean, it's like anybody's guess right now. I mean, all the catalysts and everything that I thought would be happening on 420 didn't materialize. It's now April 25th here in Vietnam, and that's Monday. So we got the, we got the markets that are going to be opening, and it looks like it's been pretty pretty nasty week overall. We're seeing all the broader markets just been getting decimated. Uh, you know, and a lot of it has to do with Jeremy Powell and his whole hawkish stance on inflation. Inflation is just like, you know, so that's not helping, guys. It's been a real turd of a week. Uh, you can see my previous, my last videos thumbnail. It's like a big, big stinky turd out there. Where are crypto? Uh, do I think this is the end? It's the bottom. We're going to continue going down from here. I don't think so. Uh, and I'm going to show you some data that, uh, you know, supports my thesis on the fact that uh, crypto is uh, not going down. Also, there's been a lot of thought about Michael Sayer out there. And, you know, there's been this uh, Mr. Whale who uh, produced this article. We're going to talk about that. He said that that uh, Michael Sayer sold all of his Bitcoin. We're going to debunk that bad boy because that's just, it's like Google in the house. So we're going to talk about that, guys. So let's take a look at the pre-markets. Let's take a look at the pre-markets. OG is singing. I'm in a pretty good mood. It's good to be, you know, when you guys go on a holiday and then you come back home, it feels good to be home, right? You know, back to, uh, you know, the comfort creatures of home, you know, so that's pretty good. So we're seeing the Dow is down, and the S&P futures are down, and the NASDAQ futures are down, guys. So it's not good. The broader markets are not good. So it's anybody's guess where we're going to see crypto uh, going uh, when the market's open. We're seeing that a lot of logs are getting liquidated. That's another why, reason why we have this whole downward price pressure going on, did he, on, on. And, uh, you know, also it looks like, uh, it looks like Elon Musk says he's confronted Bill Gates because as you guys know that uh, Bill Gates... You know, Bill Gates, he's like one of these like, you know, tree hugger kind of people like love the environment, love, love, love. And, uh, you know, Tesla's one of the best EV companies out there. So why the double H-E hockey sticks if Bill Gates loves the environment and he wants to protect the environment, reduce, uh, you know, global emissions and create more green energy? Uh, why would he uh, short <laughs> the Tesla stocks? Like, go figure. At the end of the day, the motivation is one thing. Money. So don't believe it. You know, all of these self-righteous uh, billionaires out there like Bill Gates who wants to, you know, fix the world and do this and do that. At the end of the day, the, the motivation is one thing, making money or feeling guilty for something they did. And they want to kind of right their wrong by being all, you know, you know, being philanthropic. You know what I mean? So like... It ain't what it is, guys. So it looks like Elon Musk says he's confronted Bill Gates about shorting Tesla out there. In a tweet on Friday, Tesla CEO admitted that, admitted that he asked Gates if he was short-selling shares of an electric car when investors 
the sh uh, when investors short a stock, they are betting that the price goes down. So it's not the first time two men have had a public agree disagreement. So yeah, you know, Musk doesn't like Gates and Gates don't like Musk. You know, Gates, the baby boomer in the house, guys. So get it, Gates. So let's take a look right now. At the heat map, guys, the heat map is looking pretty, pretty gnarly out there. Uh, you know, is it time to get the red sunglasses on? Is it time? Is it time to, to protect the eyes from the glare of the redness out there? So definitely, I'm seeing a lot of uh, a lot of nasty redness out there. We're seeing that uh, Bitcoin is uh, just above uh, thirty nine thousand dollars. It's already down one point three two percent here in Vietnam. We're seeing that Ethereum has gone way below our three thousand dollar level. So it's not looking good, guys. It's absolutely not looking good out there. And we got the Debbie Downer Bears loving. He's like partying, partying like nineteen sixty nine, guys. Ah, party. So yeah, the alien don't like it. I don't like it. We're gonna we, we're gonna see the Dino. Come on, Dino. Can you pump up the markets? Let's get the markets going. We need to de we need to Dino to take control of the markets because too much is going down is, you now, guys. It's not good, but it's been a whole accumulation consolidation in the house. So let's take a look at the fear and greed index. So right now we're seeing that we are we are at extreme fear, guys. And remember, this is a contrary indicator. I did dollar cost average on Thursday. I did pick up a whole bunch of uh, Biddy, Ethereum, some Lair ones, and some Doja Wozier out there. So I did that. I absolutely did that. And we're seeing that the fear and the fear and greed index, we're at 23 right now. We're at 24. So where the sentiment is just going down and down and down. You know, as we as we as we continue to linger in this negative space, we're just gonna see more Debbie Downers, more people betting the wet, betting the betting the wet. Mama, can I speak the wedding the bed? Okay, thank you. Oh, she's getting tongue tied. Must be I'm getting getting old and getting the, getting the crap it out there. <sighs> you know. It is what it is. You know, when you get old, you get you get crazier, right? So this is this whole Tweety Weet Weet Weet. So this is from uh, Shiba Shiba Toshi Nakamoto. He he put out this tweet, and he was talking about really three three main uh, ideas regarding Dogecoin. And he says, you know, one of the one of the most important things and fundamental things is one businesses accepting Doge. Uh, the more it can be used as a currency, the better, right? So we all know about this whole rate the Doge radio thing where you can transmit a doge transaction across uh, radio waves 800 miles apart and then the, uh, eventually that's daisy chained to a starling uh, uplink to starling and then it hits the internet right so that's pretty good for developing countries uh, also doge can be used for tipping currency uh, the most pure case uh, and that brings happiness guys so yeah i mean if, if elon musk does buy twitter and we all hope he does and i think he does he's, he's making made a tender offer you know that so he's he's going to be buying up as much shares as he can to take control he's going to do it and uh you know so tipping tipping jar would be very good and it's also it would also clean up the twitter space a little bit because there's a lot of a lot of nefarious bots and stuff out there you know these bots you know like ah, i'm you know and a lot of these bots are like uh, you know old guys sitting in their mother's basements and they you know they're catfishing people and they're posting these beautiful profile pictures of these uh women out there but it, they're just old 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 farts they're sitting in their mother's basement guys and then the next thing is the dogecoin ethereum bridge so this would be really cool because if we could get the dogecoin ethereum bridge when ethereum 2.0 comes out then that will allow us to participate in web 3.0 so what did elon musk say about that well first one definitely and could this be could this be elon musk signaling that uh, doge's acceptance is on the way because he did say that more businesses need to accept doge aka tesla is a business aka he thinks that uh, that businesses should accept those. So the big question is, Elon Musk, you just said, first one, definitely, yeah, thumbs up. So what happened to Tesla, bro? We're waiting for it. We've been waiting for it for a, a year. It's basically been a year now. What is going on out there? What is going on out there? Elon Musk, come on, come on, brother. What are you waiting for? You're waiting for the paint to dry or what? Pull the trigger already. Darn it, darn it, darn it. You know, second is nice to have. And he said third isn't needed in my opinion. So, yeah, second is nice to have. Uh, so is that him alluding to uh, he's going to buy Twitter? Your guess is as good as mine. So if you're loving this content and you're loving these updates, don't get smashed the likes. Boop the likes. Subscribe, BYB, and comment. So this is coming from Mr. Whale. So this Mr. Whale guy, you know, he basically produced this article. And he kind of said that... Uh, you know, uh, 
Michael Saylor has transferred all of his, his crypto, his Bitcoin, to another wallet, and the SEC doesn't care, and he sold it, yada, yada, yada. So this is a whole fun spreading on the internet that Michael Saylor has sold all of his crypto. It's complete it's complete baloney. It's complete made up. It's complete garbage out there. So uh, Michael Saylor did come out and he did tweet a rebuttal and he said this, not sure who needs to know this, but when Michael's strategy makes a material change to its corporate strategy to acquire and hodl Bitcoin, that includes selling, or, or to its Bitcoin holdings, we disclose it to our shareholders via at uh, SEC. So remember, as, uh, as MicroStrategy is a listed company, that any of their Bitcoin on the bo books, on the books, on the books, any movement of such Bitcoin, they need to declare and they need to report to SEC because it's a publicly traded company. So this whole Mr. Whale story out there is complete bogus. It's just FUD. They're spreading FUD to scare you, scare you, 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 all you weak Nancys out there to drop your sats, guys. So don't fall for it. It's complete... <coughs> It's, it's just garbage, guys. It's just garbage. It's, it's, it's a nothing burger. So uh, it's right there, guys. It's right there. It's right there. Uh, my, you know, Mike, right over there. My, Michael Saylor did say that. No, they, they didn't sell anything. And if they did, and if they did, they'd have to report it be in public domain. You could read about it. So I checked the SEC filings. Nothing out there. He hadn't sold. He hadn't sold not even one Bitcoin, guys. So forget about it out there, Mr. Well. Stop making up stories already, okay? Because we ain't falling for the, the Daily Crypto Trade Signals uh, community. We ain't falling for that foot. So yeah, you can stop it right now. Yeah, yeah. Life is like a box of chocolates, okay? So get out of there. So this is from Plan C, and he's saying a uh, time-based all-time highs. Woohoo! 64.1% of all Bitcoin circular supply has not moved in one plus years. So that is good, guys. So the conviction of hodlers is increasing, is increasing. Even though that Bitcoin is down right now, you know, we're still seeing that uh, people are not selling. Sure, we, we're seeing some, uh, you know, emotional leverage traders. <laughs> the logs got wrecked again. Like, I mean, it's like every, every video is like, the leverage traders got wrecked again, again, again. They just won't learn. So also behavioral history based on 52 week high. So we're seeing that, you know, the Bitcoin price is still, you know, it, it's going down on, on, a, on a shorter time frame. But if you zoom out, Wendy Trendy is your friend, it's still going up. We're seeing that, the, you know, behavioral based 52 week highs are coming in. And 67.7% of all Bitcoin currently circulating is held by entities with little to no track record of selling. So what that's saying is that most of the people that are holding Bitcoin right now, they have no, they have no track record of selling, guys. Like me, I'm not selling any of my Bitcoin. Absolutely not. Even the interest I make on Celsius for my Bitcoin, I ain't selling it. I ain't selling nothing. I'm holding like a crazy man out there. Even the, you know, like I've got my Phantom on Spooky Swap right now. I'm making around about 77% uh, APY. And, uh, you know, I'm making, I'm making like a buck a minute, something like that. And I'm not selling. I'm not, even the interest I'm making, I'm not selling it. I'm not using that to, uh, you know, buy, buy Starbucks or anything like that. I'm just like letting it, you know, build up and build up and build up. So that's what I'm doing, guys. It's not financial advice. You guys know that, right? I gotta, you know, I gotta say that, right? You know, uh, nothing here is financial advice. It's not, don't even think of it as financial. It's not even construed as financial advice. It's not even, it, it's not even close to financial advice. It's absolutely not financial advice in the house. So this is from Matthew Hayward. And he says that uh, Bitcoin and S&P 500 since March, 2020. So guys, if you zoom out, you can see that Wendy Trendy is your friendy. And you know, as the S&P the S is going up, bid is going up. Yeah, there's a high degree of correlation. At some point, we're gonna see the correlation between the bidding, the itty, bitty, baby, and uh, the S&P decouple. But right now, these, these guys are like brothers and sisters, and they're like walking together. So when the S&P goes down, guess what? The bid goes down. And that's something we don't want, right? We absolutely don't want that. So all I gotta say to this uh, S&P 500 is, What's wrong with you, S&P 500? Why are you not going up? Well, it's not going up because of inflation scare, unemployment scares, housing starts scares. The economy in the U.S. is just, need I say more? OMFG, right?
the economy is not good. And sure, people talk about 8.5% inflation out there. But you know, for you and me, when we go to pump gas, or we go to the grocery store and we do this and we do that, it's not 8.5% brothers and sisters. It's more like, you know, it feels like 12%, 11, 12% in my books, in my books. I mean, I got people complaining. I mean, look, in, in Vietnam, a can of Coca-Cola is 40 cents, guys. So if you're back in the US, you know what it costs. So how come I can buy a can of Coca-Cola for 40 cents and how come it's costing you more than a buck, okay? So, you know what I mean? That's why, you know, you know people say, well, oh, gee, why are you living in Vietnam? Well, a dollar goes, you know, if you use, if you use the can of Coca-Cola as a benchmark, well, you know, one dollar can buy me almost, you know, the cost of one dollar, cost of one can of Coca-Cola in America, I can buy three cans here in Vietnam. So it just means that my money goes way farther, right? So if you're making, just imagine, just imagine that if you're making a U.S. income in Vietnam, but your money stretches three times farther, how would you be living? You'd be living three times better, right? Okay? You'd be enjoying life three times better. And also, you don't have to pay a ton of taxes out here too. So that's a bonus point, right? So that's the reason I'm out here, guys, because it's about, you know, it's about dollar cost averaging. It's about economies of scales right? You know, if you're making like $250,000 a year in the U.S. and you're living in California, you're not living, you're not living high in the hog, that's for sure. You're living okay, but not high in the hog. But remember, if you're in Vietnam making that kind of money, you're a king. You're an absolute king. You've got, you've got, you've got an entourage. You've got, you've got personal assistants. You've got people that do the groceries. You got people cleaning your house, you got a cook, you got this, you got that. Okay, think about it. Think about that one and uh, get on over to Asia, guys. You know, it's, it's, it's more fun. Uh, the weather's good. It's hot all the time out here. Uh, you know, it's just good. It's good. It's more fun. I mean, geez, I mean, the beach is literally, I don't know, it's literally, I can throw a baseball out my window and literally hit the beach. Basically, it's a, it's a, a you know, a four-lane road, my, my house, four-lane road, the beach. Okay, that's how close I am. So this is from uh, Woo Blockchain, Woo Blockchain in the house. And in the past, our Bitcoin fell below $39,000. We saw that Ethereum below, fell below 2,900 bucks and 114 million was liquidated within four hours. Global stock market has been falling. Uh, at the same time with the Nasdaq down 2.5%, S&P fell down 2.77%, and the U.S. tech giants were collectively reporting earnings this week. So we've got a huge, huge amount of uh, tech giants reporting earnings this week. So hopefully the earnings are positive because that will help stand up the S&P and the whole broader markets, and that will have a good reversal for crypto. So we got like Alphabet, Google, right? We got Apple, uh, we got Microsoft, we got a ton, a ton, Amazon out there. Uh, Novartis out there. So we got a ton of uh, earnings reports coming in this week, guys. So buckle up. If the earnings are good, and let's give our fingers crossed are good, then we're going to see the Dino on stage with the OG, and that only means one thing. Things are going up. So if not, if the earnings are bad, then we're going to see cryptos going down, S&P going down, the NASI going down, broader markets going down, and it's going to be a disaster. It's going to be a lot of red, guys. And you know what that means. If it goes red, the sunglasses are coming on like a crazy man because I don't get blinded by the glare. So that's what's going to be happening. So let's keep our fingers crossed, guys. So this just coming in. I still, I still think that we're in this accumulation phase. I still think that we're playing out this whole Wyckoff scenario and that the summer is going to be huge. Sure, I got it wrong on the, uh, the Dogecoin at 15 cents. Remember, it's still not over yet, right? We still, we still could have a huge reversal. Uh, I think we've got another another like 12, 12, 13 hours left so from when you watch this to when, you know, flips to flips to uh, Tuesday. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Maybe something mir miracle is going to happen, guys. Ah. So hopefully get a miracle. Let's take a look at the leverage edge. Oh, 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 the apes in the house. So we're seeing right now that the, the apes are back at it again. And we got $187.53 million worth of wreckage. There's about 66,000 traders have got wrecked. And we're seeing right now the majority of longs, and that's why we're seeing the bitty, itty bitty is going down, diddy, diddy, down, down. Let's take a look at what's going on in the four hours, longs, eh. So Bitcoin will be going down 100%. Uh, 
uh, shorts, we're starting to, we're building up on the hourly some shorts. So hopefully the shorts will get some momentum and that will take us into 4, 12 hour and 24 hour time frame. So I'm hoping it does. But you're seeing that basically it's longs. The longer the long longs are getting wrecked, that's creating a long squeeze. That is pushing the Bitcoin price down because market makers want to get rid of the longs. They want to take your liquidity out there. And the only way you can do that is push the price of Bitcoin down. So if you guys think that the, the Bitcoin markets and the crypto markets have not been manipulated, so wake up, smell the coffee, guys. If you got to be in it to win it, and it's about the time in the game, guys. So, you know, at the end of the day, you got to wait till 2025. Okay, Bitcoin goes down to 20,000. Okay, who cares? Let's wake up, guys. 2025 when we have the after the next halving, boom. But I'm still convinced that this whole halving thing is a complete sham now. Typically, you have three years of bad, one year of great, and uh, that's it. But I believe that this whole halving cycle, this four-year cycle has been invalidated because we're seeing something new and different and we're seeing more and more institutions aping into uh, cryptocurrency like, like crazy, like crazy order. So guys and gals, let's get it. So right now, right now, for the price of Dogecoin, we're seeing that Dogecoin right now is uh, trading at 12, 8, 7. So our next support level for the Doge Ozer is going to be 12 cents and we are well below our uh, 12 we're well below below our uh, our uh, 1350 support level so that's going to be that I'm going to flip that bad boy um, that's going to be flip uh, red so it's not looking too good for the Doge Ozer right now so let's take a look at the uh, bitty the itty bitty on the daily right now so itty bitty on the 4 hour excuse me is uh, not looking too good you know we had hit a high we had hit a high on the 21st of April of around about $43,000 so since then we have come all the way down to where we are right now so we've done about an 8.69 percent dippity dip dip and uh, we did hit a we did go as low as uh, almost 10 percent on the dippity dip dip and uh, so what am what am i seeing for bitcoin i think bitcoin is you know and we have this we have this support line here that we can draw hold on let me get this let me get this out there let me get it let me get it let me get it so we have this line here that if i extend it all the way let me get out of here. Sometimes, you know, these charts, they just don't do what you're, what you're asking them to do. So, you know, we could be seeing that we could be seeing that Biddy could actually uh, consolidate down in this area. And this is a point of crossover or uh, convergence, in my opinion. And we could be seeing the Biddy doing something like that. And if that happens, we could be seeing that the Biddy, from where it is now, could drop all the way down to around about 37 thousand dollars so don't be too surprised if we see a thirty seven thousand dollar drop something like this kind of like in this skirting here and then getting a bounce to the upside and then taking it back up so we could see something like that happen for the biddy i have a feeling that's probably what's going to happen more likely we could see thirty seven thousand dollars incoming for the bitcoin let's take a look at bitcoin on a weekly right now so weekly it's not looking too good and the, the thirty seven thousand dollar line is around about around about there so we could be trading we could get, see ourselves you know breaking down from here and start to trade in kind of like in this area here and that's probably what's going to happen. We're probably going to see something along those lines for the biddy in the not too distant future. So we still got the Shiba Inu burn, uh, burn to talk about. And we're seeing it's pretty much the same thing. We're going to be seeing that Ethereum is uh, also down. And we're probably going to see ourselves basically going in this range like a seesaw pattern between $3,000 and $2,700. So hopefully the $2,700 uh, area will hold. I'm hoping it's holding. Uh, and if it does go below $2,700, uh, I'm going to be picking up some more. So what I'm going to do is uh, if $2,700 does, you know, if we do blow, blow past the $2,700 and we do drop down at the level, then I'm going to be putting in some, uh, some level, you know, some buy orders. I'm going to be laddering these buy orders in at $2,200, $2,300, $2,400, $2,500, $2,600, and $2,700. So I'm going to create some buy orders and, and I'm going to be picking up Ethereum as it goes down. So hopefully it does not go down, but definitely I'm going to be prepared to be buying the dip. So I'm going to also be doing the same thing for Bitcoin from where it is now, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35. I'm going to be putting some buy orders in as well. So this is the Shiba Inu news that's coming in right now. Hey, pop-ups. So it's like Shiba, Shiba Inu launches Shiba Inu born portal. What does that mean? So it says basically Shiba Inu, it introduced a burning portal. Holders can now permanently destroy their tokens, reducing, reducing the circulating supply. Okay, so, you know, basically what they're saying is you do that, 
uh, we're gonna, we're, you can give away your Shiba Inu, we're gonna burn it, and this is what you get in return. So what you're gonna get is you're gonna get about 4.9% APY on that. Uh, zero, sorry, you, so users will be rewarded who decide to burn their tokens. Okay, let me just highlight that for you. So basically what they're saying is the reward, the reward users will, will decide to burn their tokens. The team provides an incentive in the form of potential, in potential passive source. Those who burn ship will receive a token called burn ship. The owners of the latter will receive rewards in Ryoshi tokens. Ryoshi is an, is an anonymous creator of the Shiba Inu project and 0.49% of the Ryoshi transaction will be distributed to the owners of burn ship tokens. So that's what's going to happen. You basically, you know, all the transaction fees, you're going to be getting a, uh, you're going to, you're going to be getting a portion of that. And so from my perspective, I wouldn't be burning my Shiba Inu because I'm not going to get one for one a return on that guys. So you're going to get some passive income and sure, it's going to take some time for you guys to, uh, to recover the losses from burning. Uh, sure, in the long term you might make more or you may not depending on if the price of Shiba Inu goes down or up guys. So let's take a look at the price of Shiba Inu right now. So you can see that you know on the on the daily time frame Shiba Inu has not been doing too good because we've had a pretty similar pattern that Doja Wosher had uh, and it's almost identical guys. You can see a huge descending triangle that goes all the way back to October to where we are now. And if we measure from the top to the bottom of that, you can see that Shiba Inu from the top to the bottom for where we are right now has given up around about 73%, okay? So Shiba Inu has gone down 73%. Uh, Dogecoin has also gone down pretty much uh, the same amount. Let's just take a look at that. So that's 73% to where we are right now. Let's take a look at Doge, Doge Wozier on the, as well. And let's just measure that bad boy in there. Let's see here. So you can see that Doge has had a very similar pattern uh, and it's gone down almost 73% as well. So it's pretty, pretty much similar. You can see, look, it's, it's almost an identical pattern as a Shiba Inu. So will Shiba Inu suffer the same fate as Dogecoin? Most likely, yes. Uh, will it recover? Yes, in time. Will Dogecoin recover? Yes, in time. Uh, but you know, we can see that, you know, this was all the euphoria, the hype uh, we saw with, uh, uh, with uh, Dogecoin, with the Shiba Inu, excuse me. We saw all the euphoria and hype here. And then it started to kind of like, and then we're, we're slowly gonna make ourselves back up again. But it's gonna take time. Uh, it could take a year uh, for us to go back to those levels again for Shiba Inu, for Dogecoin also the same. But I think in the summertime, I'm, I'm hoping that in the summertime we should be able to see ourselves getting up the up up guys. So let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the Phantom in the house. So Phantom is not looking too good either. We have broken down below our one dollar and thirty four level, and we got some good support around about a buck right now. So the dollar level is holding. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the Solana. Solana right now is trading at ninety seven dollars. So we have broken down from a very key support level of hundred dollars. So our next support level is about 78 bucks, so it's not looking too good. Let's take a look at the total, the total market cap. It's at 1.86 trillion. The volume is at 46.46 billion, interesting number. And the Bitcoin dollars has come up again, so that is not good. We need the Bitcoin dollars to come down to about 38 before we see a true, true altcoin season start to pump. We're seeing right now that the Bitcoin is down 1.57%. It's down 1.7% for the week. We're seeing Ethereum as well is down as well. We're seeing BNB is down. We're seeing Solana is down. Uh, you know, and any of these altcoins that are below, uh, down more than 10%, they're good pickups. We're seeing Luna is still doing pretty good on the seven day, but it's slightly down. So Luna is looking stronger. ADA is down as well. I'm waiting for ADA to go down to 85 cents before I pick that up. We're seeing Avalanche is down as well. Dotty Wabwat is down. Doge is down as well. Shiba Inu is down as well. Everything is looking pretty bad out there. So it's a bloodbath. This is going to complete carnage. So guys, that's going to bring this video to a close. Hopefully it's informative. Don't forget to go down there. Smash the likes. Boop the likes. Subscribe. Show some love with Super Chats. And guys, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Also remember, check out the links. Check out the links. Get the links. Get the links, guys. And don't forget to uh, follow me, guys. I'm not on this as financial advice. I appreciate it. 
Get the merch, guys. Remember, all the merchandise, all the memberships, all the super chats goes to charity. I love it. You love it, guys. So with that being said, guys, I just want you to all have a blessed, blessed day. Be well. Be blessed. Be lovely out there. And God bless each and everyone. And I know that crypto's not looking pretty good right now. I know a lot of you are dead be downing it. Feel, feeling not so good. Feeling the pressure. And I wouldn't worry about it too much. We're going to get over this. Just hold, guys. Hollow. Be patient. And wait for light chain and wealth. Peace out. This is Ric Flair of Crypto in house. Woo! I'll see you in the next one. You love it, I love it, let's get it, yeah.